about how you could play a song called Not A Bad Thing by Justin Timberlake. And it starts off with this cool little intro lick, and if you wanted to kind of follow those notes, you could start second on the G string, it's kind of a slide to seventh fret, and then we go to eighth fret on the B string, and then we go back to the G, back to the B, and back to the G, and then we go to seventh fret on the B string, seven on the G, and then ten on the B, and then seven on the G, and then eighth fret, or yeah, eighth fret on the B. And then we can kind of take that idea, and then we take the, the seventh fret on the G and do it as a slide to 12. And then we go to 13 on the B, and almost kind of do that same idea. Kind of that 13, 12, 13, 12, and then we go to 12 on the B, 12 on the G, and then 15 on the B, and then we go to, to 14 on the G. So if you wanted to kind of follow those notes, you'd have that 2, 7, 8, 7, 8, 7, 7, 7, 7, 10, 7 8. 7, 12, 13, 12, 13, 13, 12, 13, 12, 12, 15, 14. It could be kind of a cool lick to kind of intro the tune. And that kind of happens around our main verse progression of a G major chord. It's kind of where we start. And the way you play G major, first finger goes to the A on the second fret, second finger on the low E third fret, and third finger on the high E third fret. If you strum all those together, that's how it's a G major chord and it sounds really happy. Now while you're on G's, you may also want to think about putting the third finger on the B string third, pinky on the high E third, kind of working that for your G major. And then from the G, we go to an E minor chord, which is E minor. First finger goes to the A second fret, second finger on the D string second fret, and if you strum all those together, it sounds an E minor chord and it sounds really sad. Now you may also want to think about adding in the third finger on the B string third, pinky on the high E third to that. Minor seven, and that way you don't have to actually kind of move three and four between that G and E minor change. And then from the E minor, we go to a D major chord. There's a couple different options here. You could do a regular D where you do first finger on the G second fret, second finger on the high second fret, third finger on the B string third fret. And if you strum the D string to the high E string, that sounds a D major chord and it sounds really happy. Now on the D in general, you can kind of lift the second finger, make that a D suspended second. Or adding the pinky on the high and make that a D sus and kind of say some things around D's. But you kind of hear where, where the bass note on that D is an F sharp note um, in the recording. So you could kind of take the regular D and cover that low E string on the second fret with your thumb. And that's something called D slash F sharp or D with an F sharp in the bass. Or if that feels really weird to you, um, you could do first finger on the low E second fret, second finger on the G second fret, third finger on the B third, pinky on the high third for a D sus slash F sharp, which is really close to that. That way you can kind of leave your third and your fourth fingers down between that change through the song. And you kind of hear this cool little rhythm that kind of kicks it off where you can take the G and do kind of a down up, down up, and kind of kill the strings, and then we do that again. And then we go to E minor seven, do the same idea, down up, down up, kill it. And then we go to the D slash F sharp, down up, down up, and kind of kill it. And you kind of hear this little lick, especially on, on the outro, actually, where you could play open D as a hammer on the second fret, and then open G as a hammer on the second fret, and then kind of end up on the open G as kind of part of the G chord. So it's kind of this O2, O2, O, it's kind of that little lick that comes in. So you're doing a D to an E note, and then a G to an A note, and then kind of ending back on the G, and you maybe want to make that the chord hit. Slash F sharp, lick, G, G, E minor, D slash F sharp. Now there are other strumming options too, and if you wanted to kind of dig on this, you could even kind of make it a down count idea, kind of a G, E minor, D slash F sharp, so just kind of filling in downs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and do an E minor for four. Slash F sharp for four, or you can even kind of half the E minor and D slash F sharp with kind of three plus five, one, two, three, D, one, two, three, four, five, kind of an idea, kind of a halving idea. Now add a little bit of beauty to that and make that a little sneaky too. Or one of my favorite strum patterns for a four-four like this is down, down, up, up, down, up. 
So we took the G and tried that a lot. You have down, 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 down. down. The weird part about applying that is that E minor D don't last as long. So you may want to do it just a down, down up on those chords to kind of half them. Or if you're a little bit more adventurous, you could split the pattern and have the E minor with a down, down, and then hit the D slash F sharp with the up, up, down. Your foot of the beat. Right now we're kind of dividing that beat into two parts, not down, down, up, up, down. One, two, one, two, and that's called an eighth note. What a sixteenth note is, is where you divide that into four parts. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And one of my favorite sixteenth note strum patterns is a long down, 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 up, up, down, down, down. And what I mean by that is if you take the G and do a down for four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's what you'd be doing on the first beat. Then on the second beat, you'd be doing a down on one, down on three, up on four. So you're going one, two, three, four, down, 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 down. And then on the third beat, you'd be doing an up on two, down on three. So you're going one, two, three, four, one, up, down, one, up, down, one, up, down. And then on the last beat, you'd be going down, up, down, up, right along with the one, two, three, four. So down, up, down, up, down, down, down. So all together, you got down. Notes from pattern, you could work that same idea for the E minor D. So you could do kind of a long down, down, down on each of those chords. Or if you're a little bit more adventurous, you could split the pattern. Have the E minor with a down, the down, down, D on the up, up, down, down, up, down. So we tried it with, with our 16th pattern. We have the G. First down of the down, down, up, up, down, up. You could throw a bass note in for the chord. So on the G, you'd have low E for the bass. On the E minor, you'd have low E for the bass. And on the D slash F sharp, you'd have low E for the bass. On the regular D, you'd have a D for the bass. So we could kind of add in basses to that. We make it a G with a bass. Down, up, up, down, E minor with low E bass. D with a D bass. G with low E bass. D e minor with low E bass. D slash F sharp with low E bass. Put the pattern to E minor, D, just have to run those bases, bass, down, up, down, up, E minor, E on the up, down. Or if you're digging on the 16th, you could add basses to that and kind of work it off of bass, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, down, up, or bass, bass, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, down, up, or bass, bass, down, down, up, up, bass, down, up, down. So if you tried it that way, you'd have a G. First finger goes to the B on the first fret, second finger on the D second fret, third finger on the G string second fret, and if you strum all those together, that sounds an A minor chord. That sounds really sad. And while you're on A minors in general, it can be kind of cool to lift the first finger, make that an A suspended second, or you could add in the pinky on the B third for an A suspended chord. 
kind of say some things around A minors, or you could lift off the third finger and make it an A minor seven, or add in the pinky on the high E third for an A minor seven. Or if you're digging on that E minor seven voicing, you could do an A seven sus, where you do first finger on the D second, second finger on the G second, third finger on the B string third, pinky on the high E third, and that sounds slightly unresolved, but could be kind of cool if you're just starting out. And then from the A minor, we go to our D slash F sharp, and then we go to our E minor chord, and then we kind of split the D slash F sharp with the G, and then we go back to A minor, and then we go to our D slash F sharp, and then we go to a C major chord. And we play C major. First finger goes to the B on the first fret, second finger on the D second, third finger on the A third. And if you strum the A string to the high E string, that sounds a C major chord and it sounds really happy. Now you can, while you're on C's, it can be kind of cool to lift the first finger and make that a C major seven, or add the pinky in on the B third and make it a C major nine, or another way to play C major nine if you're digging on that voicing, is you do one on the D second, second finger on the A string third, third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third, and kind of work back for your C major. Major nine. And on that part, we kind of do our, our, our whole pattern on a lot of the chords, but there are a couple places where we're having them. So we tried that with a bass down up, up, down up. The A minor would have the A for the bass, and the C would have the A for the bass. All those two chords. So all the way through that whole bridge, you'd have the A minor for the A bass, D with a little B bass, for the D sus slash F sharp, D minor. And then we got the D slash F sharp, G. around these chords or other ways to kind of have the strum pattern, you know, feel free to kind of take, take liberty with this lesson any way you want to. Not a bad thing by Justin Timberlake, so good luck.